You've all been asking me for my updated Season 15 settings and as well as how you can get your settings to be just like mine. So here it is, the settings that I've been using for all of Season 15 to hit dope clips like these ones here. I'm pushing up on this. This is a great time to push up. Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be going over my updated Season 15 ALC settings for Apex Legends. Obviously, that's the title of the video. You guys have seriously been harassing me in all of my live streams, all of my comment sections on YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram. Everywhere I go, all I see, even in my DMs, I've been seeing, District, what are your updated Season 15 settings? So today we are going to be going over that in depth. Not only are we going to be going over my personal Season 15 ALC settings and why I personally like my own settings, Settings, but we're also going to be diving into what settings you should be using depending on the type of feel that you're trying to get out of the game. You know, if you're trying to go for that fast flicky sense, what should you be going for? If you're trying to get, you know, a more steady, accurate, you know, sense overall, like what you should be adjusting to get that feel. All right, so hop in right on into my settings. Throw a timestamp up right now if you just want to see controller settings. There it is. Interact prompt style. Compact versus default. This personally is just giving a lot more open screen space. If I look at the ground right here and I look at this, that's a pretty small icon that pops up versus if I put on default, it takes up a lot of space. So we like to play with that on compact. And for the most part, this is going to be the theme for most of the gameplay settings. Button hints, same thing. Turn that off, extra screen space. Crosshair damage, turn that off, extra screen space. Damage numbers, stack this, should not be on floating, or at the very minimum, it should be a mix of stacking or both. Basically, if you're playing on floating, have fun counting how much damage you just did to that person. I really hope that you're good at math. Versus, if you play on stacking, it's gonna give you that total number output. You're gonna know exactly how much damage you're putting in. It's a much easier call out for your teammates, or just personally, you know how much damage you did, you know if you can push up or if you have to back up. Ping opacity, same theme as before. Put on faded, it's gonna give you a lot more screen space, or it's just gonna help minimize clutter on your screen. Obituaries, we like to have that on. This is a real clear indicator as to what's happening in the game. There's a Kraber on the field. If somebody's kind of RE45, it lets you know if you're walking up to a third party and you hear a flat line going off, you see a flat line get a knock then you know that maybe that team that's fighting in front of you just got a knock, or maybe they just finished their fight, and now you know that when you pull up, everyone should be full health, or they might be rezzing. It gives you a clear indicator as to what's happening around you. Minimap rotation, I like this off. I just don't like it when it rotates. It's really hard for me to keep track of where I am and where things are. Uh, weapon on auto cycle, 
personal preference, I like this off. It helps me not accidentally swap my gun back after the auto swapped my gun, if that makes any sense. Auto sprint. If you're on controller, this 100% should be turned off for this reason right here. You can still walk with auto sprint. You just push your stick forward and it auto sprints for you. So it's one less press that you have to do. If I turn this on, every time I want to sprint, I need to click L3. So if I'm going in for a wall bounce, L3 forward, slide, jump. If I'm just trying to sprint, L3 forward, L3 forward, L3 forward. It's going to break down your stick way faster as well. It's just, it's just one less thing that you have to do if you have it turned on auto. So I like it on auto. It helps me with movement and just overall not wanting to blow my brains out all over my monitor. Um, double tap to sprint. This is pure preference. I used to have it on. It messed me up a lot. It got me killed a lot of the times. I would accidentally auto sprint off of a ledge, fall down, land on a team and die. Um, so I just turn that off. Jetpack control. If you have a controller that has like back buttons, turn it on hold. Damage preference. I like 3D. Taking damage closes death box menu. This has to be turned off no matter what. There is no excuse to have this turned on. The main thing is that if you're in a death box and you get shot, it's going to kick you out and then you can't grab whatever you're trying to grab so let's just say you're in the middle of like a 1v2 or a 1v1 right and you need to quickly armor swap if you don't have that setting turned off you're gonna go into the box and just before you grab it it's gonna kick you out and then you're gonna die and then that's over you might take a little extra damage but you're gonna grab that full shield and then you're gonna come over and you're just gonna show pop up pop up streamer mode anonymous does not matter sharing nope performance preference club invites don't care communication don't care reticle and laser sight both of these still don't care if you want to know what i play on play 77 255 250 for my laser sight 153 57 255 and then again colorblind don't play colorblind everything else here is just whatever the default is don't care now hopping on into my controller settings this is something that's very important to understand that i play with a custom build controller from cinch gaming so not only do I have adjustable thumbsticks like a tall thumbstick on the right side but I also have four back buttons as well as custom digital triggers where it doesn't pull all the way it's literally just a mouse click down this is very important because if you have a basic controller your button layout should not be the same as mine my button layout is customized because I have a custom control by the way if you're trying to look at getting a custom controller check out the link in the description down below save yourself a couple bucks and if you send in your own controller you can save an extra fifty dollars just saying good little savings right there now now, hopping on into my controller layout, I'm gonna use my mouse for all this. When you are inside of a death box, you cannot crouch and you cannot jump as long as those two mechanics are mapped to the default button. So if my crouch is on B, B, no matter what, will always be mapped to exiting a death box. Same thing with A. If you're on PlayStation, this would be the same as circle and X. So because I changed my crouch from B to now Y, now whenever I hit my new crouch button, the Y button, I'm actually gonna be allowed to crouch while inside of a death box. If you change your jump button to anything other than A, let's just pretend we change it to LT. Whenever you hit LT in a death box, now you'll be able to actually jump when you're in a death box. Anyways, and then I melee with B. And a reminder, I do everything with my back buttons. Right? And then I melee actually with my B button. So I'll take my thumb off the stick and I'll just quickly melee you like that. That's the only time I ever take my thumb off the stick is to melee. Now hopping on into stick layout, that's default, interact, button reload. I play slightly different. I play tap to use and hold to reload. The main reason why I changed it to that is for this reason right here. If I want to reload my gun, I can now do that while looking at a zip line. Versus if I play on the default setting, which is tap to use and tap to reload, the game will always prioritize interacting rather than reloading. So if there's a door in front of me, or in this case, a zip line, and I need to shoot my gun, it will, it will always prioritize grabbing the zip line rather than actually reloading my gun. Crouch button, because again, I play on a custom controller with four back buttons, right? I'm able to hit my back button whenever I want and then look around while I'm crouching. You couldn't typically play on hold if you play with a default button layout, but overall having your crouch on hold gives you a lot more versatility in what you're able to do. Aim button on hold, survival slot. This is just so I can inspect my guns a lot easier. Trigger dead zones, none. Menu cursor speed, purely preference. I play about halfway, just slightly under. Anything more than that and I can't control it. Anything under that and it feels too slow when I'm looting. ALCs, the P de resistance, as my grandfather would say. There are three main settings here that really affect how you experience the game. That is going to be your dead zone, your response curve, and then your outer threshold. Going into dead zone. Overall, you want your dead zone to be as low as possible. I can handle 3%, so I choose to go with 3%. Response curve, again, I like to have a very fast, flicky, responsive feeling. If I go any more than zero, like let's just say I play around three and up, it is way too stiff for my personal preference, and it feels gross when I play. I can't properly move my cursor to where I want it to be. My paroptics, I like to increase every paroptic by 
1.2. So 2x would be 1.2, 3, 1.4, 1.6, so on and so forth. The main reason is this. If I pick up, let's just say an Arthro one and I have a 4x on it, right? Typically, if I was right here, right, with a 2x, that's cool. With a 4x, I can still comfortably track, put my cursor where I want to go. So that's why the, the only reason why I turn up these settings so that if I have to use the site up close, I can comfortably do so. Now, these settings here, again, it's all pure preference. So the first thing you'll notice is that my yaw speed, my left and right, and my pitch, my up and down are the same speed versus the default. People typically like to put their left and right a little bit faster than their up and down because it feels steady for them. The main reason of why I don't do that and I have it mapped one to one is because if I need to make a 45 degree diagonal, let's just say somebody goes this way, I like to be able to comfortably track that and not have to adjust for the slow vertical speed. Heading on over into my ADS or my looking down sight speed and map those settings one to one. So that way, whatever I do in real life with my thumbs, it's going to happen in the game exactly how I wanted it to happen. I like to play slightly faster. I lowered it to 170, 170. I was just noticing that on a slower sense ADS, I was way more consistent up close and a little bit more consistent at range. The recoil became slightly harder to control, but the tracking and the consistency went up. For me, that was a good trade-off. And again, I like to have a little bit of extra turning yaw on my ADS. That way, whenever I am aiming at range, I can quickly flick on over to where I'm trying to go. Now my video settings, I like to play on stretched resolution. Basically what that is, the aspect ratio is 16 by 10 as opposed to 16 by 9. What's happening here is you are removing some of the vertical pixels of your screen and then you are stretching out your resolution. And the reason why I prefer this is because one, you get better FPS because you don't have to render in as many pixels. So your FPS, your performance goes up a little bit. And then two, everything that you look at is slightly wider. It's not game changing wide. It's not game breaking wide. What's happening is because it's a little bit wider, it's a little bit easier to see these up close targets and even these far away targets just because they're slightly wider. It helps me hit a little bit more shots consistently. Going back into my video settings, I play low on everything, right? Literally everything is either disabled or it's turned to like the one of the lowest settings that you can do. It's all about that FPS at the end of the day. In the ALC section, heading on into the dead zone, you typically want to have this as low as possible. Having a little bit of stick drift like this, that's not a bad thing. You do want to have some stick drift. That means that when you hit your stick, it's going to input right away. If there's no stick drift, that's not the end of the world. It's not that that's a bad thing. It's actually good that you don't have stick drift if you go low. You just want to make sure that you go as low as possible. It's going to give you the most control over your analog stick. If you look at this, let's just crank this up right here. This blue circle, anything on the inside right here is what does not get registered. This is your whole thumb stick. If I pull my thumb within this range here, nothing will register. Outer threshold, it's like the reverse of dead zone. What outer threshold does is this is going to be your new maximum of how far you can bring your stick. So if my stick is in the middle and I drag it all the way out here, this is now considered the 100% mark for how far my stick can go. So the more that you increase this, you can see 31%, you've lost 31% of your possible amount of control. If you want to have slightly faster acceleration, you can turn this up slightly. I suggest leaving it around the default. At most, go 3 to 4%. Anything more than that and it's going to be a little too much response curve this is all about your sensitivity how fast things will react in the game how slow things will feel in the game so typically this is what's known as a classic sense it's around 10 percent a linear sense or raw input sense is around zero percent now the main thing here that you want to consider when you're adjusting your response curve is do you want to have a really steady or do you want to have a very reactive feeling or whenever you touch your stick it's really moving in game something that you can do to really understand this is look at your graph right here this left side here is as if you haven't pulled your stick at all. This right side, you pulled your stick all the way up to the edge. This blue is your acceleration, how fast you're turning. If you want a really steady feeling, check this out. You see right here on this left side, even though you've pulled your thumbstick about a third of the way, it's not accelerating that much. So the higher you go, those smaller movements start to register a lot less. And then those larger movements respond a lot more aggressively. Versus if you play on a medium response curve to a low response curve, what you'll notice notice over here is that those little smaller movements, the beginning movements that you make, they start to respond a lot sooner. So those little micro corrections that you make, they'll feel more aggressive. They'll feel like they're really reacting. You won't have to pull your thumb nearly as far to control recoil. I'll give you an example of this. We'll crank this up to about classic right here. Very decently large movements with my thumb. Not much is happening in game, right? Almost nothing is happening right here. 
versus if I go back to that setting, crank it all the way down, same movement, a lot more is happening in game. As far as recoil control, also not really warmed up, just kind of shooting right here. You can see, I'm not really, look at that thumbstick right there. I'm not really moving that thumbstick all that much. I just hit a 206, hardly moving my thumbstick. And then hopping on into the whole yaws and pitches. The yaws and the pitches are purely preference. A lot of people consider this sensitivity. I want you to consider this speed. When you think of sensitivity, I want you to think of response curve instead. Let's just say you wanna have a fast speed, but you don't want it to react all that much. What you're going to do is you're going to turn up your yaws and your pitches and then you're going to have a medium to high response curve what this is going to do for you is though even though you're playing on a fast speed those smaller movements will feel a bit faster but not too fast because you have that higher response curve so it minimizes those smaller movements and then your larger speeds when you want to make a full 180 or a full 360 it will really kick up when you crank your stick to the edge if you wanna have a slow and steady, but very responsive feeling, right? What you can do is you can lower your yaws and your pitches and lower your response curve. So now those smaller movements that you make will still feel very responsive and very fast because it's going to accelerate sooner, but your maximum speed, so let's just say the time it takes to do a full 360 will just be a little bit longer. So that's a way that you can kind of balance it. You can use the response curve to be very reactive and very precise with what you do. And then you can use the yaws and the pitches to balance it out to what feels comfortable for you and again the the extra yaws and the extra pitches all that's doing is giving you an extra boost of speed when you reach that outer threshold so if let's just give you a quick reminder that outer threshold is that orange line the edge or the maximum that your stick reaches once you reach your outer threshold then you'll have an extra 250 boost or whatever value you decide to put that on Hey guys, I know that was a really long video, but if you did like and you did enjoy it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more educational type videos coming out to help you really understand how the game works and how you can adjust your settings and so on and so forth to better benefit you and get a much better experience when you play Apex. And if you didn't know, we live stream Apex almost every single day. Come stop by, ask any questions if you have any. We always answer as much as we can. And we try to provide as much value as we can to our community. So come stop by. We love you. Have a good one, guys.